people always knew that I was going to be a teacher even when I was little. Um, I think the earliest notification that I got was from my sisters because I have a younger brother and so my siblings would tell me that they would see me when I would go to school I would come back and want to teach my brother how to do what I had been taught and then you know I just never strayed away from wanting to be a teacher I started teaching Sunday school when I was in the seventh grade so from that point on I've always been connected with teaching and even at that age I was trying to write lesson plans <laughs> I was trying to write lesson plans in the seventh grade for my um, Sunday school lesson. And so when I got to college and the decision, you know, was confirmed that I would be a teacher, I just always felt like this is what I need to do. I was tempted to go into other areas, but I always came back to teaching because I know that that's my passion. So I think the exciting part about my job is being able to interact with teachers when I do staff developments and just kind of get down to be provided with the opportunity to hear what their questions and concerns are about the curriculum that has been developed. Uh, one of the things that I hold on to that I heard my um, Deputy Superintendent Karen Hickman say is that we have a viable curriculum in Pasadena and I think that as we go to different conferences and hear other curriculum specialists or leaders or peers that I that work in other districts that do similar things to what I do I can kind of hear the difference in what they have versus what we have so when I am Working with teachers and even with other specialists, it's a joy to know that we can stand on that viable curriculum that we've spent a lot of time or that the instructional specialists have spent a lot of time working on, refining and making sure <coughs> that it addresses the standard, I'm sorry, the student expectations that have been uh, written by the state. So I think the exciting part for me is being creative in helping teachers be creative with how can I take this standard, I'm um, sorry, this student expectation and inflect some strategies into it that will still maintain the curriculum, but at the same time making sure that it meets the needs of the kids that are in the classrooms. That's exciting. It really is. It has to be relevant. Even, and right now I'm thinking about, even when I teach <clears throat> a Bible study at my church, it's not enough to just teach the way it's written because kids won't get the connection unless they see how it relates to them. And not just relates to them, but how they can take what you've given them and make it theirs. Having students to take ownership of their learning or what they've learned. So I think that kids get excited when they can see how something that is very abstract or something that's very beyond their time of living or whatever the case may be relates to something that they see in science, something that they see in social studies, or something that they're reading or writing about. I think that that key to getting kids excited is to have them to interact with it and interact with it so that it makes sense to them. I think the most important question is don't forget about the kids. Always let the kids be the focus of what you're doing. Sure, our curriculum is good. Well, it's great. Um, our curriculum is important and we take ownership, teachers take ownership of what they teach. But at the same time, we have to remember that we're teaching students and every one of those students has their own way of learning and so we don't want to get so caught up in this particular SC that we forget to be creative in showing how this SC can be taught or differentiated or expanded to meet the needs of our kids. So as I'm training, I always try to help teachers to not lose focus of that particular student or the students or even the culture of your classroom because that's going to be very important in making sure that students walk away with a connection to what you've taught and not just a connection but prior knowledge that can be activated when they get to their next course or their next grade level. Aside from the things that come along with the job, the breaks, you have to be dedicated and you also have to be ready to um, step outside the box. 
specifically with the youth and the adolescent that we're raising today. Um, you can't be you can't be okay with just giving a little bit, and that little bit is not just with, you know, it's not an eight to five job. It can't be an eight, eight to five job. It has to be something that you are truly going to be dedicated to. Uh, it has to be something that you would want your own children to receive if you have kids that will be coming to schools in Pasadena. And it has to be something that you're committed to doing. Will we always get it right the first time it's implemented? No. But uh, again, a part of being a healthy risk taker is saying, okay, let's be self-reflective. Let me be self-reflective and say, this was my strength, this was my weakness, or not a, not a strength. So now that <coughs> I've taught this, what is another way that I can tweak it to make it exceptionally, um, to make it exceptional the next time I have to do it? 